Hi, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Supporting the Hybrid Workforce webinar. We're going to give a few minutes for more people to hop in, and at around 102, we'll get started. Well, all right. Uh, hi, everyone. Welcome to the Supporting the Hybrid Workforce webinars from Kensington. We're really happy for you all to be here. My name is Cole. I'm a channel marketing coordinator at Kensington, and I'll be um, moderating the webinar today. And then I'll introduce you to our wonderful presenters. And just a little bit of housekeeping to keep everyone up to speed. Everyone in the webinar will be on mute for the duration of the presentation. And if you have any questions, please make sure to submit them through the chat function, and then we'll answer them all at the end with all of our presenters. And if you have any questions after the webinar that we might not have gotten to, please, um, if you're a reseller, please email advantage at kensington.com, and then we'll get back to you. Or if you're a customer, go ahead and email sales at kensington.com as well. And then a little bit of a fun, exciting part. At the end of the webinar, three lucky people will get a chance to win 100 bucks after the, so that'll be a lot of fun. And then a little bit of an agenda today will be, um, I'll go ahead and introduce all of our wonderful presenters, and then we'll have an introduction to Kensington, as well as an introduction to the hybrid work environment. And then along with that, there'll be this new office environment that we'll be getting to experience when everyone's returning to the office and a little bit of everything in between. And then at the very end of the presentation, we'll go over all the questions that you might have for us. So here's our wonderful presenters. And we've got um, Dan Yeager, who's our director of our US sales. And then um, you probably have recognized a lot of these faces. And then we have Kirsten, who's our channel account manager and Donovan, who's our director of our channel sales, and as well as Matt Sumner, who's our sales engineer. And then, Thanks, Cole. Appreciate the- All right, uh, Donovan, take it away. Appreciate the intro. Um, well, good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, appreciate you spending some time out of your day to connect with Kensington on this sort of hybrid work model. So this first slide actually looks at Kensington, the professional's choice, and it's a statement that really embodies what Kensington's all about. Um, sort of the pride that we take in creating products with the professional in mind. Um, at the end of the day, you know, Kensington really enables professionals to be ultra productive, whether that is um, in your office, in your home office, you know, out on a patio or boat somewhere at a Starbucks or at a corporate office. So that's what, uh, that's what really embodies that statement right there. If you go to the next slide. So this next slide actually looks at um, really our core values. So Kensington's been in business for over 25 years. Um, we have pride ourselves on meticulous design and engineering um, that can be seen in award-winning products like our Studio Doc that was launched at the beginning of this year. Um, our attention to uh, detail and quality has sort of be become synonymous with, Ke with Kensington and our lock and really become a standard in the industry. Um, with sustainability um, being part of that core value, um, Kensington launched an eco-friendly packaging um, at the beginning of the year that's 99% recyclable using things like soy ink, um, plant-based packaging that's approved by the Forest uh, Stewardship Coun Council. Um, at the end of the day, what the, our core values mean is it actually correlates to our net promoter score. You can see on the right there, that's the score in the, the little blue bubble. But if you're not familiar with the net promoter score, it's a survey that we do with our customers. And it asks the question, how likely is it that you would recommend Kensington? 
Um, we send this out and, and get their feedback. Um, any score above zero is deemed good. 20 is favorable and anything above 50 is excellent. So we're really proud of that score, getting a 64. And what that really means is it signals to us that you know, our customers are loyal to us um, and you know, we stand a greater likelihood to have repeat business. And you know, that's, that's something we're really proud of. And if you go to the next slide, Cole. So we get into our focus on our key product categories. So the first one is security. Now that's really what Kensington's known for. Um, under the security umbrella, that could be anything from a standard Kensington lock. Um, it could be a privacy screen that's gonna protect your data. Um, it could mean protecting data that's on documents with something like a shredder. Um, so that's just a, a part of our security. And the, oh, the other one thing I'd, I'd also like to point out is we can protect your data with things like our Verimark fingerprint readers. So keep that in mind for, for that umbrella of security. Um, then you kind of bounce over to the right there on connectivity. Um, that is really anything that's going to connect to a device. Um, you know, the first thing that comes to mind when I hear connectivity is really docking stations. So Kensington has a whole line of universal docks, but also under that connect connectivity um, umbrella, you'd find products like um, mice and keyboards and input products um, and things like headsets, just to name a few. And then lastly, wellness. That's a product category. Um, that is really about making people more comfortable and productive at the end of the day. We have things that uh, will we'll do that, like uh, um, mice and keyboards that are ergonomically friendly. We also have monitor stands, uh, laptop risers, wrist rest, back rest. Those sort of products are going to make you more productive. Go to the next slide, Cole. Now I'm going to jump into uh, sort of this new way of working, which is the hybrid model. Hope you want to jump to the next slide. So in um, in early March, Ford announced that 30,000 of its employees were going to go to a, a hybrid option to work both remotely and in person. Now we've been working with Ford to really enable their employees to be successful in this model. And what, for hybrid work, that's really a policy of allowing employees to work both at their corporate location a couple of days a week and as well as their home office a couple of days a week or, or remotely. Um, they plan to uh, do this in July. And what we're working on with, uh, with Ford is bundles. Uh, bundles of products that include things like um, an ergonomic mouse, a, ca a compact keyboard, and a laptop riser. So they're gonna be in a hoteling environment at their corporate location. And they wanna easily be able to use those devices and, and have her easy setup, but also be able to bring those home and have them easily transportable when they're working from their home office. So Ford's one company that's doing that, but other companies are also shifting their um, sort of plan to allow employees to work remotely. Uh, one of those companies is actually Target. Um, and if you go to the next slide, Cole. So if you look at this statement, 90% of um, HR leaders are allowing employees to work remotely at least part of the time, even after COVID-19. This was a statement um, that was created by a survey done from Gartner. It shows this shift in accepting remote work uh, by large well-known co uh, companies that you see there. You, know, you can see Ford and, and Target all appear there. And that you know, remote, remote working and, and having a hybrid strategy is, is even more important now than ever. So Target, for instance, announced in March they would they would move to this hybrid model, uh, very like uh, Ford, um, which would impact 25% of their Minneapolis area employees, allowing them to go part-time um, remote as well as work on site um, at their downtown location and other locations within sort of the Minneapolis community. Um, by doing this, Target was actually able to reduce their their space and real estate needed, while allowing more flexibility and not really missing a step in sales. And just talking with uh, people that I know um, that work at Target, um, it seems like it's been really well received that they're listening to the, the need to be flexible and allow for this remote working. And productivity and sales have, have never been better. And you've seen that in some of the, uh, the earnings reporting that's, uh, that, that's coming out of Target right now. You wanna go to the next slide. So one of the things, um, that's really changing is employee expectations. They're really shifting um, due to COVID, right? 
So if you look at that top um, uh, chart, seven, three out of four employees are really expecting to um, be able to work at home two days a week and expect their employer to support it. Another thing that's happening in the industry is employees are asking for allowances or stipends um, to help them with their work from home. And that could mean that in the form of a stipend to buy a, a, a chair, a, a new monitor, it could help them subsidize something like Wi-Fi. Um, so that's, that's something that's become pretty important um, as expectations have changed. And I think you'll also find that expectations have really changed just on the, the forefront of before COVID, I think if we were doing a, a webinar or Zoom call or Teams call and we were on video and somebody's kid came in or a dog was barking or a baby crying, I think people would be more mortified um, back then and, and they're really not anymore, right? It's become sort of the new norm. So expectations are definitely changing. Now, the next slide I'm gonna get into is some of the hybrid work definitions that we're seeing out there. There's really four types of work. Hybrid work is what we're really here to talk about today. Um, it's dividing your, your time between a home or office environment. Um, this may have traditionally been done by sales in the past, but now because of COVID and working remote, everyone um, has sort of expanded into this hybrid work or, or you know, working remotely. Um, distributed work is a fully remote model where companies may not have a central location. Um, and then there's co-located um, co work which means uh, work that needs to be done as a team in the same physical location. Um, an example maybe of this would be Goldman Sachs announced recently that they wanted all their employees to return to the office to the same physical location by June 14th. And then that, that fourth um, uh, definition is asynchronous work as something that can be done at someone's own pace versus a, a sort of defined hierarchy or order. Um, something like that would be if you looked at a research company that didn't have like a definitive timeline or was dependent on other people, um, that would be an example of that. And then within these uh, different work definitions, um, there's also team and role designations that lead into the next slide here. So within the, the top um, few boxes there that are Navy, um, you can see, uh, you know, work fits into one of three different formats. Hybrid teams uh, work in between the office and home. Split teams are compromised of, a, uh, you know, potentially different office locations and home locations. And finally, a remote team would be fully remote. There's no office, uh, there's no commute or central location to go to. And then the gray boxes below represent sort of the roles within those teams um, and the designation. So there's really two types. The first is, um, uh, office first role. So you could think of this as somebody like maybe a IT admin that needs to be um, on the on the ground at the office, or it could be maybe a facilities person. Um, and then there's uh, the box on the right in gray is the remote first role. And that could be really somebody that is out on the road traveling like a salesperson um, that's going to need to be in front of customers that may not need to be in the office on a regular basis to collaborate and, and work in a team environment. Um, so that's really uh, sort of the team and role designations within um, sort of the hybrid work model and within an organization. If you go to the next slide. So one of the things that uh, hybrid working you see is a really a convergence of decisions being made um, between facilities, IT, and HR that will impact companies' hybrid model and encompass really what is needed. Um, so these, these kind of three uh, decision makers are really going to impact how a remote and hybrid work uh, model looks like uh, for their company. And they have some challenges. So, you know, some of the challenges with hybrid workers, um, for instance, if you look at HR, um, they have things like corporate culture that they have to worry about or policies that are being created when people are working in between an office or a home. Um, so they have their set of challenges. Uh, a facilities person may be looking at how to optimize square footage. Um, as people work from home, they may not need that same footprint in an office. They, they need to downsize. Um, they're also worried about cleaning protocols, whether that means you know, they're, they're having to clean something on a regular basis, um, or does it mean that they have these sort of hoteling environments where they have, you know, have to work with HR on policies about that. Um, and then probably the biggest thing is the IT um, administrator um, really worrying about security. 
whether that's in the office or a home office um, or somebody that's on the road, right? And you know they want to make sure it's a good experience for their uh, employees. So they want to have the hardware and assets that they're managing work properly, efficiently. So um, you know employees can be productive at the end of the day. Um, so you know the pandemic really served to be really a, a, a accelerant for change, and that meant pulling us, you know, sort of from the dark ages of 2020 to 2025 very quickly, right? We we shifted and pivoted to doing a ton of Teams calls and video calls, um, and, and the digital transformation was really upon us. And and I think people now uh, all of a sudden had concerns over individual health, uh, their well-being was uh, was was really a critical issue. Um, it also transforms sort of the expectations that you know people want to work sort of with a, a boundaryless um, uh, environment, and employers and employees expect that to be safe, productive, and sort of seamless at the end of the day. And I think that probably the, the one of the bigger things that uh, has become important too is when you look at just the overall user experience. So. 77% of employees see that good uh, employee user experience um, of their technology tools translate to better customer experience and ultimately revenue, right? So um, if you're working from a home office, you really want to have a, a great experience. You want your Wi-Fi to be working properly. You want to have uh, you know, multiple monitors to be using so you can be productive and working on spreadsheets. You want it all to go smoothly. You want the software uh, to, to be working properly in systems. And sort of that that um, back end support that you're getting from IT and, and your company, um, so you know making you more productive um, at the end of the day, making it easier on your customers, and you know ultimately ultimately that's going to uh, relate to increase in revenue um, for your for your company, right? So um, you know that's sort of the user experience. Um, you know one of the things that uh, um, Kensington does is really we craft solutions that enable our professionals to you know, really be productive, whether that is, you know, working from home or in the office or somewhere remote. So I, I'm going to actually hand it off to Dan Yeager now, um, who's going to get into some of those solutions um, that Kensington provides our customers um, at the end of the day. So thank you. Thanks, Donovan. Appreciate that. Uh, we're to talk a little bit about the um, off, office hoteling and office hot desking environments right now. Uh, Cole, you can go to the next slide. And then one more. So whether you're calling it a balanced, flexible, or hybrid work environment, it's really about um, how companies are currently utilizing this space. If we can think way back into 2019, a lot of companies were dedicating resources to really changing the traditional cubicle environment to be a more open, collaborative space. 20, end of 2019 hits. 2020, all that space sits idle. So now what's happening is they're redefining that space. So in a hoteling environment, it's really about shared workspace, but it's a scheduled shared workspace. Hot desking is really about that open environment and really just setting up shop where there is space to, to, accommodate, uh, to accommodate the users. Next space. Next slide, sorry. Um, now that space has dedicated products typically uh, on there. So a lot of those products we make, and uh, we've been in a lot of discussions with customers regarding their needs around that space. Uh, docking stations that are universal and can accommodate different um, operating systems, uh, different uh, screens, different power delivery. All those are very uh, detailed discussions that uh, has have had to have been figured out. Uh, the number of monitors that are being that are being offered to an employee in a in a workspace like that, uh, what that keyboard uh, really looks like. Uh, you know, there's definitely a standard idea of a of a universal keyboard, but we're seeing more people start to have needs around offering certain um, space for ergonomic products, offering space for more mobile products. Um, and likewise, the mouse, the, the mousing uh, option, you know, is an ergonomic product, um, something that some space, some areas will accommodate, um, or is it more of a traditional one? And then access to power is always critical for any of these devices. 
Next slide. I'm going to hand it off to Matt Sumner. He's our product engineer, and he can talk a little bit in a little bit more detail around some of the devices and some of the docking support that's offered. Great. Thanks, Dan. So, fun fact, guys, if we look down at the beer, 81% of organizations support more than one laptop brand of their employees. That's not uncommon. I mean, when we look at the landscape of, of different enterprise customers and organizations, I mean, we can even look internally at Kensington here. Um, we have different users that, that run different platforms. Our marketing teams are running Macs, our Salesforce are running HP or Dell devices. We have running Surface Pros. Um, we have users that are running workstation class devices um, down to the ultra thin thin products um, and and even new to to the arena is is things like the iPad pro um, that's really starting to gain a foothold in 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 the business environment so and that really becomes a nightmare for an IT organ, uh, excuse me, an IT organization, because now they're trying to find solutions that are going to support all of these different devices. Um, looking at at the growth trends, uh, tablet growth, 11.7 percent, again leading back to that iPad Pro um, the story. Um, laptop growth, surprisingly, 8.8 percent .8 uh, year over year. Um, think about what the pandemic has done to uh, have to take employees and shift them from dedicated office space to being remote, being flexible, right? And and on the opposite side of that coin, uh, year over year, desktop declines 9.9 percent, .9 almost almost double digit uh, decline there. So so again, getting back to this this flexible organization where companies have this variety of hardware, a universal docking station is something that that really eases that pain point for an IT buyer because it gives them one solution that's going to be compatible across the board um, with all of the different devices whether it's um, you know again a Mac or a PC whether it's a Chromebook or uh, even an iPad let's go to the next slide Chloe. Um, so taking away the complexities, right? So when we when we think about this, what we really want to look at is is solutions that again are are going to support a wide variety of of, of hardware, a wide variety of laptops or devices. Um, so we have a couple different solutions that that will will fit the bill. So we can look at devices that will support uh, both Thunderbolt three and USB C host devices. Those docking stations would be driver lists. So essentially just a, a simple plug and play solution. You're going to find on the Thunderbolt side, the, the, those docking stations will drive uh, dual 4K displays. They support 40 gigabit data throughput. Um, usually, you're finding power delivery anywhere from 85 up to 100 watts uh, uh, total power delivery to that host device. Um, and then, obviously, cross compatibility with with USB-C technology. Um, you know, having something that's going to work in both arenas just makes for a more flexible environment. Um, when we look at uh, some customers that, that still have legacy devices, believe it or not, there are still several organizations that are running older laptops. They're, they're working perfectly well in the environment, but they don't have the, the newer the newer technology of USB-C. So, so how do you cross that or bridge that that gap where you have uh, USB-A hardware, um, but you know that USB-C is is inevitable? Um, so we have the hybrid solutions that will work in both capacities. These docking stations are going to be driver based. Um, they're going to utilize a, a little piece a little piece of software that will allow that USB 3.0 throughput as well as you know future proofing the environment by moving to USB-C and incorporating things like USB-C power delivery. When we look at our hybrid landscape, uh, these are the docking stations that, that are, are falling into these spaces. So the, the first two models, the SD5600, the SD5500, uh, those are cross compatible between both USB-C and Thunderbolt 3 host devices. Um, over to the right, we have our display link driver based solutions. So the 4700 series, the 4900 triple video dock, um, those those devices do utilize the um, the display link driver technology to support those external displays. But I think the the the, the main point to look at here is is when we can standardize on one solution that fits all devices across the board or is going to provide that universal compatibility. It, it frees up that IT manager's time. It gives them the ability to focus on the more important things uh, within their organization that 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 they need to work on and, and not really having to worry about um, supporting a user because of nuances between different docking stations based on the different hardware they have. So that's what I have on, on the, the universal docking station landscape. We'll, we'll go back to Dan here for the, the, the rest of this portion here. 
Thanks, Matt. And uh, before I move on, I just want to give um, Matt a little plug. So Matt is our product engineer, and he is a uh, expert doc troubleshooter. Um, I think everyone on this call probably realizes um, that the current chip shortage affecting a lot of products has really created a lot of volatility in the docking station um, category. So to pull Matt in on a call to discuss discuss environmental needs, um, to talk about um, options uh, relating to inventory, relating to price points, relating to all these things, can really help um, an, a, a organization plan out and plan uh, to ride this through. So please, uh, you know, you, you, uh, utilize Matt and uh, all the other resources that can be in and because uh, we can really help on that front. And according to the Intel CEO, um, nothing's going to really change, you know, through 2021, 2022 in this, uh, on this landscape. So just wanted to uh, let you know there are resources out there to assist. So moving on, we have um, one um, idea around the shared workspace, hoteling, hot desking, is that um, there is a security need because if one item from that hoteling environment or that hot desk environment um, is moved, are taken, um, that space now becomes useless to the user, to the intended purpose uh, for the user, um, specifically around docking stations um, and some of the other devices. There are security slots built into the into uh, a lot of our products, or there is a way to physically secure them in place. And uh, we often don't think about having to secure the peripherals in a work environment, but when things are picked up and moved to a new room, something along those lines, then it really does have an impact and an unnecessary call to the IT help desk to say, um, you know, this, this space is not outfitted properly and then they have to address it. So something to consider when uh, either considering it or presenting it to customers. Next slide. The security landscape, we're known for our security locks, and uh, years ago there was just one Kensington standard slot, but now there are three. So we have uh, accommodated all three with one product. This has uh, the three different lock slot um, uh, options in, in one package uh, that can be utilized in the lock itself. And then uh, an IT uh, person or facilities manager can easily determine uh, what lock head, what um, slot head needs to be put into the product for you. So a great option that is kind of addressing a huge pain point right now and trying to figure out what locks are needed for what devices um, and, uh, and it can really save time and effort. Next uh, slide. We've heard a lot about CDC uh, recommendations throughout the pandemic. Uh, one area that they've given guidance on is how often a workspace should be cleaned and uh, high touch surfaces should be cleaned at least once a day or as often as determined depending upon the uh, um, number of people moving through that space. So that's something we've taken into consideration because it directly impacts um, the consideration around peripherals and what should be used in different work um, environments. Next slide. One of the big conversations that we've had um, is around washable products, so washable keyboards, washable mice. Um, we were involved in a project with the Mayo Clinic not too long ago where they sent us a list, I think it was 12 different cleaning solvents that they use throughout their facilities as part of their cleaning protocols. And they needed to know what reaction the cleaning solvents would have on peripherals. So we went through an exercise where we did everything from rugged cases for Surface Pros uh, to keyboards, to mice, to docking stations, to understand what is the material those products are made out of and which solvents would probably be best suited uh, to be used uh, when, when cleaning those. So it becomes you know, very detailed and uh, because it is a big topic and a very important topic. So just know that we have products that can accommodate a lot of those discussions and we will soon have an antimicrobial feature in uh, these products as well so you can look for that. Next slide. Cool. The other option here that we're seeing and Donovan alluded to it uh, touch on a little bit um, was a lot of companies are considering just giving employees a personal kit of 
product that they would travel with. So it, you know, something that is uh, small and compact can easily fit into a, into a case such as the multi-device dual wireless compact keyboard, an excellent product that is, um, um, has a great feel to it, yet is small, um, compact and mobile for the user. And then a, a SureTrack wireless mouse that can work on basically any surface for the user. So these are ops, these are, it's another um, strategy to be used um, in the hoteling or hot desking, desking space by, by companies. Next slide. New technology is definitely emerging in this space. So the power of UV, so the ability to kill up to 99.9% .9 of bacteria and viruses by utilizing that technology. It's not anything too new. Um, if you have any of the um, own soap cases, you understand that there have been products out there. This is taking it now to a more enterprise level so that uh, companies can use it as part of their protocol. A lot of companies have said, versus relying on a cleaning crew to come in or to set sanitizer next to every workstation and then expect people to follow or understand the um, detailed aspects of cleaning a surface. We want, we want to lean on technology um, it's a it's a more cost effective long term solution that can be utilized. So something like this is really you know, being given a given a, um, a hard look. Next slide, Cole. <clears throat> this is a little animation that Cole will uh, start, but this would be this is our UV disinfecting stand that can accommodate keyboard, mouse, even maybe a personal item or two. Uh, can be put in there. Uh, the UV process does not start until the door is closed so that there is no exposure to the UV um, UV um, light. And then after 10 minutes, uh, the products can be taken out and then and then utilized. This has been very popular with facilities that have common workspace like security desks, where there is a scheduled change of personnel and they come in and then they can establish this uh, between um, uh, the uh, first shift leaving and the next shift coming in. Next uh, slide. So these are a little bit of the specs around the UV stand. So this is a monitor stand uh, that can accommodate uh, two 24 inch monitors or up to one 34 inch monitor and up to 40 pounds. So it's a pretty robust stand in and of itself. Uh, and, uh, and so it has more functionality. A lot of companies um, utilize monitor stands to just give a little bit better screen positioning to be a little bit more ergonomically uh, suited for users. And now you incorporate this into it, it really does have a um, hot desking or shared space solution element uh, to, to that a lot of people are taking a, taking a look at. Next slide. So these are some of the key areas of we were to bundle product or if we were to, to come up with uh, with a mix to consider this, this would be a great offering for that uh, for that space that accommodates the keyboard mouse security and then a universal dock that uh, that that can be that can be standardized on. Next slide. All right, I'll hand it over to Kirsten who will talk a little bit more about the home office. Thanks, Dan. Sure. Um, moving probably into one of the most productive spaces in your life currently, um, the home office. Uh, next slide, Cole. Um, consistent research, um, as you can see here, um, has shown that remote workers log longer hours and have increased productivity in the home office. Um, so how do we make sure to maintain this success? What does that kind of look like? Um, I know from personal experience, the more inviting and user-friendly you make your office, the harder you'll want to work and stay in that space. Um, so we'll see on the next few slides how to do this. One added boost um, would be adding another monitor, as um, Donovan um, spoke about a little bit earlier. So using multiple displays um, helps with the time it takes to complete tasks. So working with two screens, I'm sure everybody knows, um, that allows maybe a little bit for uh, natural flow and concentration levels to remain high. Um, it has also been found to make working with a computer for longer periods of time more enjoyable um, and then further enhancing productivity. Um, I use dual monitors and I, I definitely like them a lot better. Next slide, Cole. 
Um, you'll see a, a kind of a quick checklist we have put together here. Um, adding that monitor, keyboard, mouse, and docking station will keep you working efficiently, um, maintaining that inviting space. And we'll kind of go into review of how these look in the next few slides. Um, moving into um, our home office connectivity portfolio. So here you'll kind of see Kensington lineup. Um, as, you, as you heard from Matt Sumner earlier, um, our docking expert definitely knows a lot about all of these. Um, so starting from our USB-C to Ethernet adapter for professionals needing that kind of reliable internet connection, and then move all the way through um, to the SD4800 and our SD4700. Um, for professionals and businesses that have a need for dual monitors and or additional ports. Um, so having that correct uh, docking station and docking solution will help increase the power and productivity in your home office. Um, and it kind of lets you enjoy that experience of the desktop monitor without needing a second device. Um, I know from my home office, it makes things run much smoother. Next slide, Cole. Remote work, um, although enjoyable and more productive, um, also can be very hard on the body. Um, a glance at this slide, you'll see that many people have had back pain and neck pain. Um, their posture is increasingly worse. I know myself, by the end of the day, I'm starting to hunch over, um, and I have had some back issues. Um, so tailoring my desk setup around um, what works best for me and trying to avoid that pain is definitely a great scenario for your home office. And we at Kensington, you know, we want to make sure that we can set you up for success um, with our ergonomic products to make sure your health is not taking a hit. Next slide, Cole. Um, here you can see we really want to prevent any injuries or pain in the body. Um, on this slide, you see our musculoskeletal disorders um, are just that. So they're injuries in the body, joints, ligaments, and tendons. Um, I don't know about you, but I would rather have the right home office set up and not need to worry about these issues that could arise. Um, so we want to take productivity and, set, and the setup that you might have had in your work office space and really replicate that in the home office space. Um, since we are seeing most companies allow employees to work from home, this is now crucial more than ever to have the correct home office set up. Um, and moving into that next slide, we're going to kind of um, realize that Kensington um, understands that one size does not fit all. Um, so here you can see, um, we want you to be able to purchase our ergonomic products and align them to your needs. Um, so we're really excited to offer our SmartFit system. Um, I'm sure many of you actually probably have um, one of our SmartFit products, um, but it lets you customize each product to fit your work environment. So the SmartFit system allows you to select your personal height um, and your setting using the color-coded fitting chart there with your handprint you can kind of see. Um, it's very user-friendly and massively helps preventing those disorders that we spoke about earlier. Kensington wants you to work well and feel well. Um, so you can see on this slide, making some of these impactful ergonomic changes uh, will really help your home office environment. So adding that ergo mouse, the keyboard, the monitor, arms and stands, footrest and wrist rest, all of this can make a huge impact on how your work is going to go for that day. On the next slide, you're going to kind of see three of our Ergo products. Um, our first here you can see is our wireless keyboard and mouse. Um, this is an awesome product for the home office. It actually positions your hand and wrist in neutral alignment, um, allowing for the best comfort. And as you can see here, um, it has a built-in wrist rest, so that's always helpful for cushion and support. Um, our SD2000 docking station is a great way to expand your desk setup, like we spoke about, um, and use all your accessories at the same time. So plug and play, ready to go when you get into your home office. And last but not least, our SmartFit Easy Riser, um, which is height adjustable. And using that handprint we spoke about, you can actually tailor it to how it will fit your needs um, and make sure that you have the proper, proper fit in that in your office. And rounding out the home office slides here, um, Kensington also has you covered if you have a small workspace at home. So having the right accessories will make all the difference. Um, you won't feel so cramped and unproductive. Um, so a quick look at the products that will support these small workspaces on this next slide here. Um, our compact wireless keyboard. So this is a fantastic product to take anywhere. Um, I use this keyboard and I love the functionality of it. Um, our mini mobile dock, easily travelable, can move from different office setups. And then our easy riser again for those spaces that need some extra height. Um, all adjustable um, to make sure that you have the best setup. In the end, you know, Kensington wants you to work well and feel well. So the better the home office space, 
um, you have will equate to better quality of output and then, you know, make everybody happier, as Donovan um, spoke about earlier, and hopefully produce more revenue. Um, I'm going to pass this back to Dan to uh, round out the presentation. Thanks, Kirsten. Yeah, there's definitely no more shared workspace than the home, right? So, <laughs> uh, next slide, Cole. So we talk a lot about uh, security, but an area that has uh, emerged uh, in the headlines of, as of late and over the last year is really cybersecurity. And there's a, obviously a huge concern with that. Um, we probably all read the stories about the, uh, uh, the uh, energy pipeline on the East Coast that was hacked and really affected millions and millions of people. And uh, the fact that there's a lot of federal money now targeting, um, you know, the protection, uh, cyber protection. So that is going to continue to be a part of our world. I think during the pandemic, some of the phishing emails that I saw, examples of what I saw were, you know, very elaborate, very, you know, a lot more professional than what we were probably used to in the past. And uh, I know that we were even subject to it, uh, where it looked like it, came exactly from our company, something that we would uh, we would uh, expect. So that is so uh, the hackers and the uh, people doing the phishing are becoming uh, very accomplished, unfortunately. So next slide. So 80% of data uh, hacking related data breaches involve a compromise or weak password. So that is something we all live with. We all have to manage multiple passwords. Uh, we all have to uh, deal with second factor or multi-factor authentication when going online with banking. So it's just something that, you know, is being addressed and we're seeing different approaches on how to uh, make it less susceptible. Uh, next next slide. There is a, uh, a council that was set up by a lot of tech industry experts called FIDO, Fast ID Online. And their, their whole reason for existing is to move beyond the password. So um, having a biometric security is something that is very much now part of a lot of people's experience in logging on, accessing certain uh, programs, certain apps. Um, you know, it is, it is also something that can never be forgotten. So it is really quite, you know, uh, realistically your exclusive password that can never change and can never hopefully be hacked. So there's a lot of great technology and we're participating in that space to um, expand our security portfolio. Uh, next slide. So one example I want to give, because a lot of times people ask, well, I just don't understand, like, where would, uh, where would we use this or how would this be used? Um, there was a very large insurance company that we were involved with a project on that was issuing a 16 character password every eight hours um, to their IT staff. So if you think about having to remember your password to just log on to your computer or to get onto your network, network imagine having to keep track of a 16 character password every eight hours. So they made the decision to move towards biometrics and there are different options around how biometrics can be utilized. There are different um, concerns. There are uh, state laws now in place regarding how companies can hold on to or whether they can even hold on to um, biometric uh, information from employees. So one of the nice things about our um, our lineup of, bio, of uh, fingerprint readers is that a lot of times the Encrypted biometric data resides on the sensor itself. It doesn't re reside on the host. So that's a great discussion to get into with companies on how this could be implemented and how it can legally be supported and how employees can be assured that their biometric information is not something that a company is holding on to. And then you just can talk about what is the right form factor for the user. What's the right, what is the, the use case? How many people need to access the biometric uh, reader to log on to a certain device? Is it a situation where at a bank where multiple people are going to go up to a, um, to a, um, uh, to a desktop or to a login station and you need to have multiple, um, in, multiple biometric information recorded? Or is it a situation where the person will just own the reader and it'll travel with them 
Um, if it's ever lost, it is the information is fully encrypted, can never be compromised, and uh, and is really quite secure. So great discussions to really round out how to address cyber um, issues, cybersecurity issues within within any organization. Next slide. Uh, we also talked about just the viewing of information. So not just accessing, but just the fact that information is viewable. Early on in the pandemic, there was a real discussion around how secure is a home office? Not so much that someone would break in and steal something from home office, or that would be a high target area, but more in the sense that the IT group could not confirm who would be able to see and access information being pulled off of a network. You don't know who's coming through a home office, whereas in a, in a, um, you know, in a, in office environment, you understand who's coming through the door, who has access to a, a workstation, who has access to someone's device. So those are very real topics because they just created doubt around security protocols that were already in place. So something like a privacy screen that can limit just viewing access um, by people was, was of interest. And, uh, and also on another side of this is working from home office, we found that we were sitting in front of our computers even more. We were traveling less. We were now dedicated to multiple screens at the same time. So the reduction in blue light um, was also considered because that can directly impact productivity uh, of the user. So the category is is something that is being considered as just an overall, whether it's ergonomics or whether it's security wise, but um, something that uh, needs to be part of the discussion. Next uh, slide. So whether it is for smaller screens where a uh, adhesive or a static application is needed, something that is more base so that it can be robustly attached through a hinge setup like our snap to or now the newer versions of a lot of things where it was magnetically attached which is uh, which is very much um, of interest to people uh, just to be able to kind of move away from adhesive and and really have the ability to attach flip go from a mat to more of a um, gloss finish um, because of different applications and then really have that flexibility um, is is really appealing to people. Next uh, slide. So that's what I'm talking about when I, um, with the MagPro line is what I'm talking about when I talk about the magnetic application on there. So uh, patented design um, uh, fits slim bevel, which is actually was, I think motivated a lot of the development was the ability to close a laptop with it in in some situations with it on in some situations where it would basically just be part of the unit and then you also get the limited viewing angle at 30 degrees and the blue light reduction multiple sizes available so a really nice versatile option for people as as a next generation offering in uh, the privacy category next slide cole <clears throat> I think we're about wrapping it up here, but this is really around mobility and flexibility. So a lot of what we're talking about is your ability to pack this up and move from workstation to workstation, and uh, and have the uh, have the ability to, um, you know, either go into a um, shared workspace environment, hot desking, hoteling, go into the home office, pack up, move, travel. Those are real, what we're really after. Next slide. And to do that, we have, I think, a full robust offering. These are just three of the more popular ones um, that uh, mobile uh, multi-device dual wireless compact keyboard we talked about previously, the SureTrack dual wireless mouse that'll work on virtually any surface. And then the uh, very comfortable Contour 2.0 laptop backpack that gives you ample space for all of these things, plus your um, computing um, device, as well as uh, other um, other things you're going to need when you're mobile. Next slide. And with that, I think that wraps it up. So thank you very much, and uh, I'll hand it back over to the moderator, Cole. All right. Thank you all for showing all of the amazing hybrid workforce solutions we have at Kensington. And I've already been seeing a couple of questions rolling in for us, so we'll be able to go ahead and get started answering those. And if you have any more questions, feel free to put them in the chat so that we can um, get them to the associated presenter. So we already have a few docking related questions that we'll be sending over to Matt for real quick. 
And um, Nigel had a really interesting question about asking on some of the newer computers, since a lot of them are moving towards more of a USB-C or Thunderbolt only option for ports, if there will always be the option to have a display port or HDMI um, adapter available for docking stations and computers, as, um, as well as uh, using USB-C to accommodate these displays on future docking stations. And yeah, certainly. Sorry. Yeah, that's a great question. So, so in regards to displays, yes, we we do see the well. Let me step to the hardware. When we when we're looking at laptops, the reason why laptop manufacturers have moved to USB-C is because it's a universal connector that just simply does everything: power, data, video. It it covers it all. Um, so laptop manufacturers can make a thinner, smaller device, maximize battery capacity for the more mobile workforce, and then you supplement your productivity tools by utilizing it. So in docking technology, we'll always see HDMI and DisplayPort ports built into docking stations to expand that connectivity into uh, the, the video space. Uh, but we're also starting to see USB-C monitors uh, becoming more and more available on the market. And I think that's one of the great things about the Thunderbolt 4 protocol uh, supporting multi-lane architecture, where you can drive uh, uh, extra displays through a USB-C video connection, um, or you also have that ability even in USB-C docking stations um, where uh, something like our SD4850 will support a USB-C monitor. So, so that's going to start to change and evolve. Um, but with within the video space, I mean, we're we're still always seeing HDMI and DisplayPort as being the predominance. Obviously, shying away from older DVI VGA connections, USB-C is definitely the up and coming. All right, thank you. And then we had another question for docking um, from Nick asking um, if any of our hybrid docking stations do VGA ports or if we'll have to acquire a dongle to use the VGA compatibility? Certainly, that's a, that's a great question. So VGA, I kind of look at it as the display connection that just doesn't die. Um, so VGA is older analog connectivity um, with newer digital technology like HDMI or DisplayPort or even, even DVI for that matter. Uh, it makes for a much better connection. Um, None of our docking stations do have an integrated VGA port at this time, with the exception of our SD1600 mobile dock. Um, but, but all of our, our USB-C solutions, they, they default more towards uh, DisplayPort and HDMI connections um, because those are the more predominant leading, leading technologies. So adapters, unfortunately, for those old mon monitors would be needed, um, but uh, you know, they're, they're, they're pretty inexpensive. Uh, even Kensington has some uh, adaptive cables um, that would be able to convert from a, a DisplayPort connection to VGA, for example. All right, thank you very much for the quick response, Matt. And then um, Robert, to answer your question about the sanitization stand, that will be available in Canada. So that will be a, a hot product to look out for up there. And then for Dan, we also did have a locking um, question. So um, Lincoln asked about um, with the standardization of keys for locks, are there any concerns or risks that an individual that possesses a universal Kensington key could use it to unlock and steal devices in a public space? Great question. So uh, one of the things that we put in place with any custom um, solution is that the only people who are given uh, the master key or supervisor key are the administrators for the organization. So the, they're the only people that will be shipped the key, the only people who can request other keys. So it's really up to that administrator to then control the master key that addresses all the locks within a facility. And, uh, and they are on record with us so that if there are any new orders that would come in, we would only send product uh, to that person. So that has over the course of now decades been a great uh, way to, uh, uh, to make sure that there is no, there are no compromises, uh, or at least we put um, enough um, benchmarks in place to limit the, the potential for any compromises um, uh, with security products. All right, thank you, Dan, for the awesome answer to that. And for those that were asking about being able to get the presentation, we'll be following up after the webinar with a with a link to the recording, so everyone will be able to review it afterwards as well. And if there are any more questions, feel free to send them into the chat and um, 
as well. If you if they happen to come in after the webinar, feel free to email them to advantage at kensington.com for resellers or sales at kensington.com for customers. All right, well, um, I guess um, I do have a quick question for um, either Kirsten or Donovan for our um, wireless products that are washable. Um, for the future, will we having any products that will be washable that are also wireless? Good question. So, you know, obviously we do have the, the wired mouse and keyboard in our, our lineup today, but it is something we're looking at to do wireless, um, uh, you know, devices that, that would be washable. Um, more information to come on that. Um, but yeah, good question none, nonetheless. Yeah, to echo Donovan, I would say um, we know that it's a big priority, so something that we're working on. I would I would just say um, I believe we do have the spill proof or the spill resistant version of product in a wireless option. Although it's not technically washable, it does have the ability to the internal components are wrapped in a membrane. So if something is spilled on it, it can be uh, it can address that. So if that's an option for people. And additionally, our UV sanitation stand um, would be a great solution to get around having to wash a device. So by sanitizing through UV light, that would help to um, help to, to ensure the device is stay clean. All right, thank you all for your awesome answer to that. And um, again, thank you all for attending our webinar today. And feel we will send an email out after the webinar with the recording, as well as this recording will be uploaded to the Advantage Partner Portal and will be able to be viewed there as well as a recording link. And again, if you have any more questions, feel free to send those emails below. And we thank you so much for attending today and hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.